So in today's video, we're going to discuss Osgood Slaughter's disease. And today I've got Mickey Burton, who is, you've probably seen her in like 200 videos before <laughs> at least. And she ha now has her own channel, which is Motion Restoration. Mm -hmm. Mickey, why don't you tell them a little about your channel? Yeah, so my background is the massage therapy side of things. So I really have a big goal in life is to help people. So I like to do and show ways mm -hmm. of someone to massage themselves or massage someone who is suffering from different ailments. So that is why I created my channel, Motion Restoration. So you can help yourself restore your motion or you can help somebody else restore their motion. So I'm gonna put the link just below the leader here so you can go directly there. But let's get back to the topic today. So this is a condition which causes teenagers a lot of knee pain. Now these are, I think it's 10 to 15 year olds, primarily uh, boys that have this, mm -hmm. and little soccer players, basketball, a number of different sports that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so the pain itself is quite often, go down for the quads, patellar tendon, just right here, and we call the tibial tuberosity. And so if I was palpating somebody's leg who had this condition, that would be extremely sore here. Quite often they get redness, swelling, a lot of irritation around the area. Now, it's really important to understand this condition that just because we work on the quads and take stress off this area doesn't mean it's going to come around that well. So one of the, some of the key things here are we have to consider that also the hamstrings are going to be involved. There's usually imbalance between the hamstrings and the quads. So I have to release restrictions in the quadriceps, but we have to make sure that we have also release restrictions in the hamstrings, but strengthen them. Strengthening is so, so important. So Mickey, why don't we start out with actually working on the hamstrings. Get you to lie on your back, please. And Mickey has renowned uh, flexibility in your hamstrings. Oh yeah. It's amazing, so let's just get on there a little bit. <laughs> All right. Doing okay? That's it. Yeah, that's it. You might be a little bit tight here. Keep breathing. All right. Yeah, you are just super tight here. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing about the hamstring is they are your secondary uh, hip extensor, extensors, but the primary one is the glutes. So there could be restrictions in the glutes, which are also affecting this. Doing okay? Oh yeah. Just great. Okay, so I get on there for oh, probably three minutes or so, release that a bit. Now I'm actually gonna work my way around a bit to the adductors here. Why the adductors are important, quite often the adductor magnus is referred to as the fourth hamstring. That gets tight and contracted, that will also affect this. How you doing? Good. Yeah, I can always tell when you uh, go up like three octaves in your voice there. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, this is the antagonist to the glutes, so if these are tight and contracted, we're actually gonna get a diminished neurological input to the glutes, which is gonna cause more force to go onto the hamstrings. Consequently, it'll actually exacerbate the imbalance between the quads and the hamstrings. Doing okay there? Yeah. Okay, so the next thing I do is I'm gonna get you to have a seat here. And I'm gonna get you to just bring your hip over to the edge here. And I'm just gonna get on and release the actual quads a little bit here. Take your leg back, grab a leg, pull it in. Don't let the knee drop too much. Okay, how are we doing there? Good. And back. Not really as bad as working on the hamstring. No, right? not at all. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Doing okay? Yeah. Yeah, just great. Getting a little tighter as we go up farther there, isn't it? Yeah. So. Good back so all of the quads come together form the patellar tendon insert into the tibia down here so that's why it's really important that we release any restrictions in here you okay oh yeah okay and again all right now i'm gonna have you lie on your back please hey you don't even have osgood slaughter then. Oh, no. <laughs> okay so I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna kind of work around the caps a little bit first. Medial and then lateral. How's that feeling? Oh, that's nice. That's that's, that's fine. Nice. That's, that's nice. not a problem. Okay. Doing okay there? That's nice, yeah. So really getting there with my thumbs and really kind of working out the area. We wanna make sure that we work on all the fascia and connective tissue around this area. But there's one other 
point that I think is really important too, is we actually want to work down below the knee here a little bit. And I'm gonna get in and kind of work my way up towards the tibia anterior. Your anterior, you okay? Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay. No problem there? Nope. Good. Good, take us down, there we go. To the anterior, go on the outside, get up around the peroneals. There we go. All right. I'm just gonna kind of go around a few points here. There's some pretty strong fascial connections around here that need to be released too. How's that feeling right there? That's good. All right, so now I'm gonna be going into the how to maintaining the flexibility while you have Oshkosh slaughters. So I'm just gonna show a few different variations of stretches. Now your stretches are something you wanna hold for over 30 seconds. So I like to put a timer on for at least 45 seconds to one minute, sometimes even getting into the stretch and going through the breathing. It takes a little while for the muscle to relax, but your goal is to get over 30 seconds. So I'm gonna show you a few different variations. First, I'm gonna go into standing, and then I'm gonna show you when I'm laying down on the ground. So for standing, quadricep stretch. So you wanna make sure that your hips are gonna be nice and square. You're not bending back and you're not pushing forward too far. So we're gonna be finding a spot that we're gonna notice on the floor just to help our balance. We're gonna kick the affected leg back and you're gonna hold onto it. So you're bringing your heel to your bum and you're gonna to wanna to hold that for again, over 30 seconds. So at least 45 seconds to a minute. So holding. Another thing I want you to remember is going and doing the other leg as well. Don't just focus on the one that's sore, get the other leg as well. So holding that in. And the next one we're gonna do is for the hamstrings. So for that, you're gonna put all your pressure into the unaffected leg. You're gonna put your heel of the affected leg down and you're going to bend towards the toes. So hinging at the hips, you're gonna feel that nice stretch in that hamstring area. Try to relax the knee, don't have it bent, don't have it too hyperextended, just nice soft knee. But I really want you to focus into that back and tilt the hips forward as you're doing this. So another thing is breathe while you're stretching. <laughs> so nice deep breaths. And then getting deeper into the stretch. And then we're also gonna be doing into the calf muscle. So for that, you're gonna step forward in the unaffected leg, affected leg back, keeping the knee straight, heel gets to the ground, and you're just gonna lean into your front leg until you feel a nice stretch into your calf muscle in the back. And you're gonna hold that. Nice deep breaths. Perfect, and then we're gonna get into what's called the adductor, so the inside of the leg there. So for that, you're again gonna go into the unaffected leg, affected leg out to the side, and you're just gonna bend into, again, relax that knee, and you're gonna feel a stretch on the inside of that leg there. So we're just gonna hold that for, again, that 45 seconds plus. All right, so you wanna do those four stretches on each side at least three times and your goal is to try to do it once a day and then you're going to up it then you're going to go two times a day so it's good to do before after doing your sport as well so different variation we're going to go down to the ground and we're going to do these ones sitting so we're going to do a hamstring focus so you're going to put your unaffected leg with your foot connecting into where the adductors are or even just a little bit further. And then you're gonna keep the leg nice and straight, toes towards the nose, and all you're gonna do is hinge at the hips and hinging towards, bringing that toes to nose and nose to toe. So keeping a nice upper body and just bending forward. There we go. So that is good for that hamstring. And then I'm gonna go into quadricep stretch. So for this one, you're laying on your side, affected side up. You're gonna go 
and bring your heel in and you're just going to nicely rest your head and you're going to pull that uh, the toe sorry the heel towards your bum and you're just going to pull that quadricep keeping it nice and aligned so holding this perfect and then we're going to do adductors so our adductors again that inside of the leg so for that you bring your feet together in a butterfly position and up straight keep your spine up and if you're not feeling it that much, I want you to push your elbows down into your knees. So you're bringing your knees into the ground. Holding that. And then our last one that we're going to do is for the quad, sorry, for the calf muscle. So you're on all fours, quadruped. Put the affected leg out, toes down. And you're going to lean back to stretch out that calf muscle. Leaning back. So those are just a few variations of exercises to help keep that flexibility in your legs. Again, you really want to do these at least three times each and then you're going to up it. So then you're going to do it three times, but you're going to do it twice a day in morning and then again at nighttime. Even if you're not feeling the pain anymore, you need to maintain your flexibility, maintain your stretches in your leg muscles, especially if you're continuing to do that sport. So for the exercises for Oshkosh Schlotters, I'm gonna be showing you with weights, but if you are in, in a very inflamed state, just use your body weight for this. So these are very easy to do, something you can do at home as well, which is nice. So I've grabbed myself, I've got 215 pounds, cause it's easy for myself. So what we're going to do is the first one is called a suitcase squat. So your hips are going to be at shoulder width apart. You got your weights in your side and all you're going to be doing is, is if you're picking up a suitcase. So hinging at the hips, butt goes back, keeping nice consistent pressure in our feet and then back up and then down. So keep that chest up, head up. We're not leaning forward and we're not leaning back. So you're going to be doing 10 reps three times. That's just to start. And then the more advanced that you get, you're going to be increasing your weight and you're going to be increasing the times of day you do it. So 10 reps three times. Next one we're going to be doing is a reverse lunge again with weights, but if you're inflamed, no weights. So we're going to have our weight is going to be in the affected leg. And you're going to step back, down, pushing, driving up through the heel and back up. And back up. So again, we're going to be doing 10 reps, but again, you want to do both sides. Don't forget, both sides, it needs to be done. So 10 reps, three times to start. Focusing on that front leg. Just like that. And then last one we're going to be doing, sorry, not last. Next one is going to be for our hamstrings here. So for that, what we're going to do, we're going to do a straight leg deadlift. So weight is going to be in front of you. It's going to come close to your body, keeping the legs straight and then back up, contracting, really try to engage through those hamstrings. Down. There we go. So again, 10 reps three times. There we go. And then we're going to get into those calves. <laughs> so for the calves, if you happen to have a step, that's what I really like to do them on if there's a step in front of me if I didn't get better range of motion with my heels. So if you don't have one and you're just on a flat surface, that's fine too. So you got your weights. And then what you're gonna do is go into the affected leg. So I like to kind of kickstand myself <laughs> so I don't fall over. And then you're gonna go up and back down. Up, back down. Try to put all your weight into the affected leg. Just like that. There we 
go. And then the final one that I find works really well is you're gonna find yourself a wall that you can kind of lean back on. So your feet are gonna be on an angle in front of you. And all you're gonna do is bring toes up, back down. So that really helps to strengthen that patellar tendon. So all you're gonna do is just bring the toes up. No weights are required for this. So 10 reps, three sets, each one. So again, when you're first starting out, if you're very inflamed, I don't recommend using weights. Just use your body weight. Eventually you work yourself up into higher weights, higher reps, and you, hopefully this will help you get back so you can play your sport without pain. So some other exercises that are really helpful are gonna be low impact cardiovascular exercises. Swimming is amazing. It is non-weight bearing. It helps with just keeping all the heaviness off of the joints. So you're gonna be able to do that working with a kickboard or even working with a pull boy. If again, that pain is too much, pull boy goes in between the thighs and you're just gonna use your upper body, but you're still gonna get that cardio in. Cycling, getting on that spin bike, getting out and enjoying the sunshine with your bike is a great way to go too. Just be very careful with the high impact activities such as the running, the jumping, anything that's gonna involve that. Even hiking and going down the mountain can sometimes hurt as well. So just be cautious with that, but make sure you're keeping up your cardio as well, okay? Perfect.